Hello everybody. Now, my voice is a bit hoarse today, so I'm not going to be able to hit the low, hit the lows as easy as I normally can. But I haven't painted my nails in a couple of days. I had to uh, take my nail paint off. I just had a um a colonoscopy and a gastroscopy, so I uh, had to. You have to not wear nail polish when you go to one of these, so I had to take that off. But I want to put it back on. I figure we'll do a little talk about things while I paint my nails. I won't I won't be whispering today, I'll just do some soft spoken, which I hope this is soft enough. Ooh, I bonked the mic, I'm really sorry. So today we have Ambient from The Evil Within 2 playing. When you get past the first, one of the opening areas, and you end up in the big town for the first time, you go into this little abandoned house. And that's where we are today, so I hope you like it. As always, check the first line of the description, you can find a video of this where it's just us, just this version, with no gameplay. So. I don't know how exactly I'm gonna put this on. I'm really- I'm not good at doing this, by the way. This is a, um, Maybelline Fast Gel, apparently. I don't- I never really look at what ones I buy. Um, I do like painting my nails. I'm not- I'm, I'm not confident enough- sorry, I'm, I'm- I'm going all over the place. I'm confident enough in my masculinity that I don't mind painting my nails, I do like it, and I can go out wearing them, but I prefer having, like, some gloves on to sort of hide it. But I don't mind taking them off in public to do things like read a book or drink or, you know, if I need to take them off when I go inside to some place. I don't mind taking them off and, and wearing them then. But it's not something that I- I'm particularly used to yet, but I feel like the more I do it, the more comfortable I'll be with it, because who gives a shit, you know, people are going to look at you regardless, I, like, I have a lot of anxiety when I go out, i quite unfounded, um, but I, I always get this thing where people are staring at me, because people genuinely stare at me, I know that's a thing, people, like, when you go outside, if you ask somebody with anxiety what they think is happening to them, they'll say, oh, everyone's staring at me. People genuinely just stare at me. It's really weird. I notice it all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> People always stare me down. And it's so uncomfortable. So maybe I should just give them a reason to stare, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, I'm really not good at applying this. And I don't really pay attention to which ones I buy. I just buy whatever really a minute gets the job done. I think with this one it's very thin, so I have to do multiple coats. Two coats is fine normally. But I'm not great at doing my nails. Just practice, we'll, we'll, we'll get better. But uh, that one's done. That one's pretty good, I feel. Can you see that? Can I, can I be a beauty vlogger? No, you can't see that. My little skeleton fingers. It's okay. I'm trying to do it on camera, but I don't think you can see. Uh, people are home today as well, so... You might hear some noises in the background. But I hope that's okay. I do have some nail varnish remover next to me. Do you call it nail polish or nail varnish? I don't know. This was like, I think, 50p or a pound. I got it from Primark a while ago when I was buying some new jeans. I started experimenting with painting my nails, uh, I think in 2020, 2021, one of those years. Uh, I bought this red nail varnish, and I did like it, but after buying black, it's just something I enjoy wearing a bit more than the red. I feel like if anyone's gonna, if you're gonna wear nail varnish, you can't go wrong with black. Like, I, I love having nails. It helps me tap on things more. Like, I, I, I should probably cut my nails more often than I do. But they grow really, really quickly. And, um... I knew a girl, uh, years ago who was always jealous of my nails. Because they grew in quicker than hers did. And they looked nicer than hers did. So I guess I have good nails, apparently. I've had that compliment a couple times. 
I wish I could, like, flutter. You know how GB can flutter with her fingers? I can't do that. I don't know if it's like my early onset arthritis or something, but I, I just can't do that, the way she does it. <laughs> uh, I'm treating this audio differently as well than I did from the, the last episode. It was a lot of harsh sibilance and treble uh, in a couple of my words. Um, I was intending to record the audio separately through... Um, I was going to record through this microphone and through... Um, and through this microphone, the little handheld. Because that one actually has stereo, so if I move around, then it plays back in the ears. But, um, it's a lot noisier, and, uh, would require a very treated room for it, for the sounds downstairs to not leak in. So, can't use it. So I'm just recording this separately, I'm going to treat this audio, uh, in my music software, and, um take out some of the high end. So, I just had two good ideas for this video. Um, I think I'll go with the first one that I thought of. A little book recommendation. Now, I used to read a lot as a kid. I was always reading a book. I loved books. I, I loved being in libraries. Uh, something I still do as an adult. I love being in libraries just because they're quiet. Um, but I stopped reading in my teenage years. And uh, now I'm coming up on 25. I've found a lot of solace in books, and I've been reading a lot more lately, which has been really nice. Yeah, I don't typically read fiction. I like reading non-fiction stuff, psychology stuff, biographies and accounts and real-world things. But if I had to recommend a book to you, it would be, and the cover looks like a mess at the moment, uh, Quiet by Susan Cain. It's a good book about um, behavioural therapy. And the introversion and extroversion. Oh, the birds are being really loud. <laughs> um, super interesting read. Um, as a very introverted person myself, I didn't. It didn't. It wasn't like a brainwave for me. It didn't teach me anything about myself that I didn't know. But it did have some really interesting insights and really valuable information about some studies that are uh, that occurred, which was super interesting to learn about. So, I do recommend it, if you can find it. It's not a hardback, unfortunately. I do like hardbacks, but... I got this copy from an old bookstore that I used to work at. Oh, oh no. Like a doesn't sound real. I don't like that. Sounds like me when I stretch my back. I wonder if you can pick this up. Listen. Oh. You hear that? <laughs> oh. Another book I can recommend is The Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. Now this is one of those hoity-toity, um, that's a good word for it. Begins in P. Begins in P, what's the word? Uh, pretentious. It's, it's a very pretentious book, but uh, I'm pretentious, so I'll allow it. Now, this is just, um, as, it, as the name suggests, it's, it's a, a dictionary that encapsulates and describes in vivid detail emotions that we don't really have a name for, 
or circumstances and situations that are very relatable, that we all can feel. But it, it sums it up in a very eloquent, interesting, ha heartfelt, thorough way. And a beautiful hardback, beautiful cover, great sounds. The camera's so close, it's kind of difficult to show you what I'm doing with it. Because uh, you just have to use your head, I guess. Uh, I got this book a couple of years ago, but I haven't read it in a while. Uh, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Um, sort of like a, kind of like a biography, but not really. Um, it's like a self-help book. Uh, it is really interesting. Has some fun. It's, it's very anecdotal. Um, has some very off the cuff. Uh, it's kind of damaging advice, but in like a healthy way, you know, reminding you, hey, there's no guidebook for this thing. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna learn from them. Things won't always go right, and you're just gonna have to steal yourself for it. It's a very pragmatic approach to. Uh, to tackling life head on. And I, I really appreciate it for that. But I haven't read it in a while, so I'm gonna have to give it a reread pretty soon. That's a good idea. I have a psychology book up there um, that I don't really like. I never managed to finish it um, because I didn't really agree with a couple of the things that he was writing about, and he was writing very matter of factly. Um, I'm not gonna tell you who the author was or what the book is. It's not bad or anything, it's just I had a fundamental disconnect with the things he was describing in, in certain chapters and it made me just not want to finish the book. Um, obviously his opinion is his opinion. I'm not saying he's wrong or anything, it's just I disagreed with a couple of things that he wrote and I didn't really see much effort to keep reading because he was being very dismissive of uh, other opinions that he was describing. So it just felt kind of like if he's not going to give me the time of day, I'm not going to give him the time of day, you know? I have a book called The Brutal Art by Jesse Kellerman, and uh, it was a really interesting mystery book at first um, that turned into a weird gay porn. It's not, it's not porn, but it's, it, it's, it gets really in-depth with some of the character's activities of his past, and it's very kind of uncomfortable to read about. Um, so, I don't know why he went down that route, but okay. It was an interesting mystery for the most part, but he sort of hammers you over the head at the end with the the characters and the conclusion, and um, I feel like there was a lot of sequences that could have been removed to uh, better service the story. I have a manga, if you believe it or not. I've only seen four animes in my life, and that was over the span of two years. Uh, I first watched Toradora, which I thought was really good. Um, then I watched... I tried to attack on Titan, but it was boring as fuck. Um, what else did I watch? There was, oh yeah, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I really liked that. Um, Gurren Lagann was okay. And, uh, there was, I, I tuned into, this is gonna be awful, I don't wanna mention it. You know that anime, the really fucked up one. Um, I shouldn't need, that shouldn't need any more introduction. Uh, I wanted to see just how bad it was, and I remember I put it on, um, and I was streaming it to my friend at the time, so he, because he wanted to see my reaction, and not 30 seconds in, I r fucking ejected my headphones from my head, threw them at my monitor and screamed, and then turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> and then I watched all three episodes, because I wanted to see purely how bad it would get. Just how fucked up they would take it. And you know what? The first episode was the worst one. Two and three were bad. Don't get me wrong. They're all fucking disgusting pieces of media that should not have been made. But it didn't get worse. I guess I should be happy that they didn't make it worse. I don't know. But yeah, 
speaking of, not speaking of that anymore, uh, Full Metal Alchemist, I haven't watched the original anime or read the manga. I bought this years and years and years ago in 2018. Haven't read it. Just haven't got around to it. I'm not interested in it, but I haven't. One of my favourite memes is <laughs> the four comic of Ed, Ed and Alf going, Today I will attempt human transmutation. <laughs> and they both die. <laughs> I have the girl with the dragon tattoo. I remember when it came out, it was really talked about, but uh, I didn't never give it a chance. But uh, I bought it years ago, still haven't bothered <laughs> reading it. Because I don't read fiction. I have a Finnish learning book, um, a, a grammar tutor book, that I'm nowhere near good enough at Finnish yet to um, be able to work anything out in that. But I'll keep it for a couple of years down the line when I'm hopefully conversational or fluid. That would be nice. And that should be able to help me with my learning. Another book about Finland that I have, if you didn't know, I um, very much feel a kinship with Finland, the Finnish culture, Finnish tradition. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big nature boy, big nature lover, and uh, I love books and quiet and drinking. So <laughs> I feel like it's, uh, it's a good match. It's a good mix. Uh, but I have this book by Katja Pansa, The Finnish Way, um, which is a, 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 a look into the a Nordic lifestyle. And um, it's a really interesting book about diet, culture, language, um, social, like society and stuff. Finland has a baby box. They send you a box full of stuff. When you have a baby, that's so cool. And it doubles as a crib. And Finns let their baby sleep outside. Or at least traditionally they did. Um, I think that's really interesting. I have one more book to show you. But in the meantime, we'll continue with our night. Yeah, I've been learning Finnish uh, on and off since 2021. I started, I think, in March or May 2021. Um, and I started with a website called uh, Language Pod 101. It was Finnish Pod 101. And um, it was good at first. Uh, Finland has two, it has a bunch of different dialects, like a lot of other countries. Um, but there's Puhekieli, which is spoken Finnish, and there's Kiriakieli, which is, um, forgive my pronunciation, uh, Kiriakieli, which is uh, spo uh, written Finnish. So, written Finnish is very formal and um, very proper. You wouldn't really talk in written Finnish, it's very posh. Uh, spoken Finnish, on the other hand, is where you have a bunch of different dialects, and uh, it's like shorthand for the Kiriakieli. Which translates, I believe, translates to book tongue. <laughs> Whereas puhe is speak. Puhu. Puhe. I don't remember which one is the root word. I think it's puhu. I stopped using that a while ago because they just kept pestering me and sending me emails and this and that. And uh, I signed up for the, for the free trial. I cancelled my card. And then they charged me anyway. And when I emailed them about it, they refunded me. But they didn't refund me the entire price. They kept a pound. <laughs> it's very strange, but I figure that's okay. I was using their platform for like a couple of weeks, and it was good. And I didn't buy the full thing. Then I switched to Duolingo and paid for the full 60 quid for a, a year's worth of Duolingo. Which I kind of regret, because I didn't really... I, I got a lot of use out of it. I was learning it, finish on Duolingo every day. Um, but the course was very underdeveloped at the time, and still largely is. Uh, there were 400,000 people learning it when I joined up. Now there's over a million, which is kind of cool, but also kind of scary, because they're encroaching on my country, and I'm not happy with that. Finland needs to be forgotten, so I can join it. Otherwise everyone's going to be trying to get there. Apparently, Finns are dying off, so they have interesting... Uh, what's the word? Uh, it was in my head and now it's gone. Shit. Uh, immigration procedures. Because they want more people to come to Finland so that they can keep the Finns going strong. <laughs> yeah, and then I switched to Duolingo. I was on that for a year and a bit. And uh, then I stopped. 
they kept changing the course around, there was stuff on the PC course that wasn't on the mobile course, they kept changing the design, it really bothered me, so, and they, they kept scaling the rate of XP, and Duolingo is very focused on making you challenge other people, and it kind of, it's an interesting way to foster learning, but it's very forceful, and tries to push you into PvP situations, <laughs> which I didn't quite enjoy. So I stopped using it, but my friend Magnus recently just put me on a, onto his family plan, and uh, now I'm learning it again, and it's been a week, and I've gone back over a lot of the old stuff. I did do uh, finish practice every day, um, but it wasn't very much, it was like a couple of words every day. I do remember a lot of it, um, and I had a, a perk when I streamed that uh, lets me, the, the audience t tell me to do Duolingo. So you could force me to do Duolingo on stream. And it is fun to play, so but I'm excited that I'm playing it again and doing it again. It's not the best way to learn a language, it's still missing a lot, it's very situational, but it is helpful to some degree, because I'm learning a lot of words from it. Whether or not it's something I'll, that I can actually apply to my day to day, is is it's not, but it does sort of give me the groundwork for a lot of the grammar and functions and stuff. So, speaking of Finland, one thing that I wouldn't do well in the countries is with a diet because I am not a fish man uh, we sh we would never really grew up with seafood in this house it's something that my parents didn't like and they just didn't buy uh, the most they gave us was fish fingers that was it the last time that I had fish in like a restaurant was 2019 when me and some friends drove down to Hearn Bay and we went into this little restaurant and um, it was really nice the restaurant was nice. The fish wasn't. We all got the same thing. <laughs> um, we just got chips and cod. And uh, the cod was just f bland and flavorless and dumb. Uh, there's probably great fish out there and great dishes. I do like sushi, but I haven't had sushi in five, six, seven years. I think I think it's been seven years. I think I tried it in 2016. Yeah, no, I did try it in 2016. I had crab leg and squid at Comic-Con in 2016, but I uh, didn't like them either, so not a big seafood fan. Um, and Finnish food is a lot of seafood, so... Uh, but this is a, a little book that I got for £5 off Amazon. Um, beautifully put together, a nice hardback, it's like soft and, and plump, you can like push it and move it around. It's a really cool feeling. Uh, really well printed, great quality for a fiver, like a really good quality, like nice pages. Thick paper as well, great illustrations and printing. I've cooked a couple of recipes from this. Uh, you won't be able to, be able to see it. There's a sauerkraut pie, there's uh, some fish stuff, some pulla, some, uh, yeah, coffee bread pulla. Pulla. I want pulla. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I do want to make more stuff from this book, but uh, yeah, it's a nice read as just a recipe book. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And this is my pile of books that I haven't gone around to reading fully yet. I bought this one a couple months ago, uh, The Salt Path by Raina Wynn, um, about a couple, I, th I believe her, her husband was diagnosed with some terminal terminal illness, maybe cancer, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. Um, and they went for a, a big walk, uh, I, th I think it's in the first page. Yeah. Oh. So they started like, I, I think it was up here, and then they went all the way down, all the way up the UK. Not up the UK, but all the way down there on the coast. It's like a little walk to find themselves again and just live from day to day, which I think is a cool thing to do. I might try that when I'm like in my 60s and dying. <laughs> Um, this is a big book that I stole from my last workplace. Uh, basically what happened was, uh, I was there for two weeks, I got hit by a motorbike so I had to leave. Uh, I didn't have to, but I was in a lot of pain and I left the job because I couldn't really do the lifting anymore, it was a, a workhouse job. Um, it was a warehouse job, sorry, not a workhouse job, I'm not Victorian. Uh, but this book was, uh, there was a big upstairs unit that needed to be cleaned. So uh, we climbed up there and cleaned it out. It was a bunch of old stuff from the 70s and 80s, like old equipment and uh, 
um, books and stuff and lots of paperwork from hands that passed passed down through hands from a bunch of other company members 50 years ago but there was this book here uh, Usage and Abusage and it smells 50 years old and uh, I took it and I opened it up and started reading it and I've never seen a more boring fucking book in my life so I'm probably never going to finish it I'm probably just going to bin it <laughs> I got another finished book a word search puzzle book uh, which is cool because I like word searches and crosswords and code words and stuff um, but it's really confusing because I know a lot of the finish that's in this book from flicking through it and he propo he proposes it in uh, like a misleading way like at first because uh, the word searches are in English and Finnish and you can find both words so you'd think that this word here would be this word here but it's not in some word searches the words are muddled and they don't mean the same thing they mean on the left and you have to like connect them but for a learner who doesn't know any of it that's really misleading because <laughs> it doesn't tell you that it's really strange I don't know why he would do that but the guy who made this prints out a bunch of them so of just a bunch of different languages I doubt he speaks all of those languages he publishes the books from so I'd wager it's just a way that he's getting money from beginners learning a language so he doesn't really care how much thought gets put into it uh, and I bought these two books um, when I was at the hospital for my colonoscopy last week um, Atlas Paradox uh, I don't know what it's about but it's a fiction book I believe and Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow uh, which I think is another fiction book I just wanted to pick them up and, and, and read them because I thought they looked cool um, so we'll see how they go I have a tradition when I buy a book uh, that I've started uh, I'll write the date that I bought it in the top corner so I can't refund it now but I'll keep them I'll probably read them it might take me a while and here is the book that I'm currently reading, if the camera wants to focus. Why there's no manual focus on this camera, I will never understand. Hello, I'm here. Come on, camera. I believe in you. What do you think? Uh, I don't like reading more than one book at once, so I'm trying to get through this one. Uh, the Secret Hidden Life of Trees. By uh, Peter Wallerbund, Wallerbund, whatever, he's German, I don't know how you say those names. Uh, really interesting book about trees and nature, but it's kind of upsetting, because I don't like reading about all the trees being like infested and getting killed from insects and stuff. It's not very pleasant to read, uh, so I really want to get through it. I'm almost at the end now, got a little bit, oh, got a little bit left to read. Oh, this is my bookmark. Hey man, enjoy the book. I will. So once I get finished with that, I can start on the salt path, and I'll be reading that. But uh, yeah, they're the books that I have on my plate at the moment. And uh, I'm excited to get through them and read more and more and more and more. I do have a couple of other books. I have a book on uh, healthy eating. Um, I, th I thought, because I have some sort of food intolerance that's developed into this sort of autoimmune disease um, and uh, I, I went through a bunch of different diets that's what sort of started all this medical stuff and the throat stuff like the throat pain you can hear in my throat right now and it's quite there's this like air that's trapped this hoarseness it doesn't quite go away um, it's just because my throat's a bit damaged but um, there's a book about uh, about a bunch of gluten-free dishes which uh, I haven't read the book yet but uh, some of the food looks good I can eat gluten sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, it just depends on what it's in, but uh, we haven't really nailed down what the exact intolerance is, we just know so far it's either whey, whey and wheat affect it greatly, so I try not to have those two, two things, and I have a book on interior design as well, that is uh, interesting, I have re started reading it, um, but I never really got around to finishing it, it's quite a practical hands-on uh, approach to like declutter, I'm not one for very materialistic things. I'm not someone that chases trends or clothes or products. Um, it's just not something that interests me. I like having a very stress-free life where I don't think about what's new and trending and this and that. So I really live quite frugally and quite clutter-free just because it's something I prefer. So that book isn't really helping me majorly because it's like pick things, pick three things from your past and throw them out, 
and it mentions like pick this thing from your ex that you don't use and I'm like why bin that and then they're like oh bin this thing from your childhood that you don't use and I'm like well I I got rid of that like four years ago (laughs) because I didn't care about it whatsoever so I don't really have anything I can really get rid of because I don't carry I don't carry a lot of sentimentality with things but yeah that was my little ramble talk about books and recommendations and Finnish culture. Interesting. Little, I, I thought maybe I should separate those into two different things, but I feel like I can make one video out of this. Why not? This was nice. I liked it. I'm sorry that my voice wasn't um, as consistent as it could have been. Uh, it kind of hurts to talk at the moment, so I think I'm going to end it here. But um, yeah, hopefully my throat's in a bit of a better state when we do this next time. But thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. And I will see you later. And I'll have to paint the nails that I've missed. Because I missed the nails under here. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you sleep well. And I will see you whenever I see you. Bye. Moi moi.